I hear words about a cure, you know, trying to find a cure for autism. And I think, what is there to cure? <laughs> he is exactly who he's supposed to be. Welcome to the Orange Socks interviews, where we are inspiring life despite a diagnosis. When Lincoln was a year and a half, he was, um, he was actually kind of ahead in his speech and he was ahead in lots of different ways. But the older he got, the more he lost speech and he, start, he stopped interacting as much and he started having a hard time being out um, in public. And so I started to suspect, I actually started to suspect autism. I really felt like that was probably what was going on with him. Uh, but I didn't really want to face that. So, um, but I, but I had to, like I just didn't have a choice. I was in denial at first. It was hard for me to accept that something was wrong. And I looked past some signs and I excused some things as just a phase or maybe he wasn't feeling well. And uh, it was hard for me. It was a struggle. It was Thanksgiving Day, we're at um, his family's house and his first word was ball. And I remember saying, uh, come get the ball, come get the ball. And he couldn't, he couldn't say the word ball. That was kind of the moment when I, I knew something was up, that he had lost that much speech and he couldn't, he couldn't say that anymore. And that's when I knew I had to get him checked out. He was kind of low functioning. He had stopped talking entirely almost. He, he could say mom and dad, but other than that, he stopped talking and you know, and he was retreating into his own world. It's been really neat getting to know Lincoln because he is very complex and he has things about him that are different than anybody I've ever met. What is your favorite subject in school? Uh, what? Besides lunch, lunch or reason? <laughs> what? And P.E. <laughs> awesome. oh. He's, he really is special. Even though I knew my kid, I felt like I didn't know my kid after that diagnosis. I was like, I don't know what to do now. I had to get to know how to interact with him so that he knew how to interact with the world. There was a, there's something called floor time. And so I started doing floor time with him and I was doing it two or three hours every day, just being on the floor with him and playing. And it was, I loved it, but it, I was burned out a little bit. It was hard to do, to playing on the floor and trying to interrupt Play. That's the whole point of it, trying to interrupt and get your child to interact and play with you. And for a kid that doesn't want to interact and play with you, it, it's a little bit tricky. Autism in particular is a very unique, uh, it's a very unique diagnosis and kids on the spectrum are all very different. Every kid I've met on the spectrum is a, is a great kid, is a kid that is genuine and will be honest with you and will let you know their feelings and they're not, uh, they have no guile, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say. And, and that's a precious quality. I, I realized pretty early on too that I had to be his advocate. He needs to be able to handle this world that doesn't quite understand him. So we do what we can to help him with that. But we also have to be this advocate for our child. And so that's been a huge part of my life is making sure that the world understands this better, that I, you know, that I can help the world understand what autism is and what it isn't and help him to gain the services that he needs because he's, he, it will help him and it will help society too. It's not just him. If you're not going to be the advocate for your kid, nobody is. And so it really is up to you to like, take, take the bull by the horns. You've got to just do it, you know, get, you can grieve when you find out your child has a diagnosis and I think that's perfectly normal and I think you have to go through that but once you're done with that you've got to work through it you've got to push through it and be an advocate for your child. Reality is often different than expectations and that's okay that part of the joy of life part of the mystery of life is experiencing new things learning new things and being challenged and working through difficult times as crazy as that sounds uh, it's an honor for me to associate and to be part of lincoln's life the best thing i ever heard was from a woman in our neighborhood who has a child who was 11 at the time and 
I remember just being like devastated, you know, and, and I think she could sense that. And she said to me on the phone, she goes, you know, I was where you are. And I remember thinking, this is the worst thing in the world. And how am I ever going to get through this? And she says, and I look at him now and I think, what the heck was I so worried about? He's a great kid. And it doesn't seem to matter where your kid's at on the spectrum. It seems like everybody feels the same way about their kid, that they think, what the heck was I so worried about? According to the most recent statistics, 2.4% of children in the United States have autism spectrum disorder. That's one in 68 births. An autism diagnosis is less frightening when you know there are so many others walking the path with you. Get involved, donate to Orange Socks, or the Autism Association of your choice. And follow Orange Socks on social media. Share this video and visit our website at orangesocks.org.